and take some notes. So up at the top here, I wrote decimal multiplication continued. And you see those four steps I have written on the slide? I want you to jot those down in your notes. When I wrote them down, I sort of um, uh, simplified the steps. So step one is to estimate. Step two is to multiply without decimals. That means without. Step three, you're going to add back the decimal point in your product um, by comparing it to your estimate. And step four, you get to pick your strategy. Actually, that's not really a step four. It's just, I'm going to put a little like star. You get to pick which multiplication strategy you want. Um, I taught you three of them yesterday that you can pick from. So let's do three and one tenth times two and two tenths. Okay, so step one is I'm going to estimate. So I'm going to round three and one tenth and two and two tenths to the nearest whole number. That one tenth means the three stays the same. Okay, so three and one tenths rounds to three. That two tenths means the two stays the same. So two and two tenths rounds to two wholes. Okay, so let's find a good estimate now. What is three times two? It's six, which means that three and one tenth times two and two tenths is about six. All right, so step one, estimate is complete. So now we need to multiply without decimals. So I'm going to multiply 3 and 1 tenths times 2 and 2 tenths without the decimal point. I'm going to use the area model um, to do my multiplication. Why don't you practice the area model with me, even if it's not your favorite strategy. So I'm going to pretend that this is 31 times 22, and I'll add back the decimal points later. So remember, I need to decompose the factors. I'm going to break 31 into 30 plus 1 and 22 into 20 plus 2. I went ahead and made my area model, as you can see. So now I need to find the partial products. So 20 times 30 is 600. 20 times 1 is 20. 2 times 30 is 60. And 2 times 1 is 2. All right, so my last step, if you remember doing the area model, is to find the sum of all partial products. So 600 plus 20. Plus 60 plus 2 is 682. Okay, so this is where we need to um, go back to our estimate. We figured out that 31 times 22 is 682. That doesn't really make sense when we're talking about 3 and 1 tenth times 2 and 2 tenths. So let's look at our estimate. Our estimate is 6. So where do I put the decimal point in 682? to make it close to six. Let's see, here are my options. 
I can do 68 and 2 tenths. I can do 6 and 82 hundredths. Or I can put the decimal point in the beginning, 682 thousandths. I could add a zero and make it 682 ten thousandths. All right, let's stop. Which of these is most like six? You're right, six and 82 hundredths. So now I know where the decimal point goes. It goes right between the six and the eight. So three and one tenth times two and two tenths is six and 82 hundredths. All right, let's do another example. So remember, step one is to estimate. Um, and this time, I will write my numbers up and down because I'm going to use a different strategy. I'm going to do partial products. All right, so let's round 10 and 3 tenths to the nearest whole number. So I'm going to underline the digit in the ones place and circle the digit in the tenth place. That 3 makes the 0 stay the same. So 10 and 3 tenths rounds to 10. Okay, let's do the same thing down here. I'm going to underline the 4 and circle the 9. That 9 tenths makes the 4 round up to 5. Okay, so a good estimate of 10 and 3 tenths times 4 and 9 tenths would be 50. All right, so like I said, let's do partial products. We're going to get rid of the decimal point, um, decimal points, and come back at the end to add them back in. So I'm going to change the numbers to be 103 times 49. All right, so remember now we're going to multiply the different parts of each number together. We'll start with the ones place. 9 times 3. 3. Now we'll multiply the ones place of the bottom number times the tens place of the top number. So 9 times 0. Is zero. Now I'm going to multiply the ones place of the bottom number times the hundreds place of the top, no, uh, top number. So 9 times 100. And that's 900. All right, so now I'm going to multiply the tens place of the bottom number times the ones digit of the top number. 40 times 3. So 4 times 3 is 12, which means 40 times 3 is 120. Now I need to multiply 40 times 0. And now I need to multiply the tens place of this bottom number times the hundreds place of the top number. 40 times 100. That's starting to look crazy up there. So 4 times 1 is 4, which means 40 times 100 is 4,000. Now I need to find the sum of all these partial products. So let me add them all up. I need a little bit of space here. Five thousand forty seven. Now obviously that doesn't make a whole lot of sense when we know want our answer to be close to fifty. So where am I going to put 
the decimal point? Is it going to be 5 and 47 thousandths, 50 and 47 hundredths, 504 and 7 tenths? Which one makes the most sense if our estimate was 50? Yeah, if you picked 50 and 47 hundredths, then you're correct. So, we know that 4 and 9 tenths times 10 and 3 tenths is 50 and 47 hundredths. Okay, so sometimes estimating doesn't actually help us. Um, let me show you why. Um, so I need to determine the product of 1 and 3 tenths times 5 hundredths. So let's start by rounding 1 and 3 tenths to the nearest whole number. So I'm going to underline the digit in the ones place and circle the digit, digit in the tenths place. That 3 makes the 1 stay the same, so 1 and 3 tenths rounds to 1. Alright, let's now round 5 hundredths to the nearest whole number. So I'm going to underline the 0 in the 1's place and circle the 0 in the 10's place, and oh my gosh, that 0 makes the 0 stay the same, so this rounds to 0. 1 times 0 is 0. Can you see how this is like not helpful at all? So I'm going to teach you a trick to help you um, determine where to put the decimal point when you get, get your product. All right, so I'm going to use the traditional algorithm this time. Again, I can multiply without the decimals for now. So I'm going to write 13 times 5. Okay, so when I do the traditional algorithm, I take the digit in the ones place in the bottom number and multiply it times each digit in the top number. So 5 times 3 is 15, so I'm going to need to carry that 10 up here. 5 times 1 is 5, but I need to add that 1, so I get 65. Do you see how estimating didn't help me? Like, how do I know where to put the decimal point here? So there is a trick. What you can do is take a look at the factors. Count the digits to the right of the decimal point in each factor. One, two, three. So this means that the product also needs three digits to the right of the decimal point. One, two, three. So I need to put a zero here because I need three digits to the right of the decimal point. So 1 and 3 tenths times 5 hundredths is 65 thousandths. That trick of counting the digits to the right of the decimal point works for every multiplica multiplication problem with decimals. So give it a try. See if it works for you.